Nice stuff, boys. Come on, let's keep on the attack. Adam's open. Adam's open. Find him. Yes, Adam. Come on. Finally got a first lead goal. Oh, Adam. Oh, I feel that my sun is on. Gonna bring a tear to my eye. Great job, boys. Great job, Adam. Well done. Oh. It's party in the streets and the Hello everyone and welcome to episode number 25 of the New Zealand Builder Nation here on Sean Does FM with both the All Whites and with AF Auckland. Currently we're actually coming back a little bit earlier than I said we would at the end of yesterday's episode. First up we'll take on McCarthy FC seeing as those guys have risen up the table quite a bit off the back of yesterday's episode and off the back of a game in the Australian League Cup. Then we'll take on the Melbourne victory in that second game of today's episode. So if you're looking forward to that as well, it's a recap of our Asian tour in the past international window with the All Whites. Then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up on the video. And if you haven't done so already and are enjoying the series here on the channel, also consider hitting that subscribe button and turning that notification bell on as well. It is greatly appreciated, but in yesterday's episode, we took on both the Wellington Phoenix and the Western Sydney Wanderers in two top of the table clashes. If you missed that one, I'll leave a link to it. Over in the top right corner, off the back of that, we did have an international window first up, where we took on both Palestine as well as Kuwait, and thankfully, got some good results in that window. It does now mean I think we've gone 21 games without defeat here with the All Whites. First up away at Palestine, this was a team actually ranked above us going into this window. We picked up a very comfortable 4-0 win, gave George McDonald from the Wellington Phoenix a debut on the right wing in this game, and he was superb. A goal and assist, he already looks like a really good prospect for us at 17 years old, does the young man from Nelson, which does mean, of course, that Adam does FM, not the best new gem from Nelson in the game which is a little bit embarrassing, but George McDonald does look like a really good player, a goal and an assist, and also Clayton lewis Stamanek and Bratic. He picked up his first goal for the national team in this game, and we pick up a very, very comfortable 4-0 win over a team that were ranked above us. That was a good start to that international window. Off the back of that, for our second game, did have to put out a bit more of a rotated team as we took on Kuwait, but these guys were ranked below us, down around the 120 mark. On the world rankings, it was a closer game, a 5-3 win. One all at halftime off the back of a Sarpretzing penalty being cancelled out by a goal to al -Qadi. Off back of that though, goals in the second half, a good spurt there in between the 60 and 80 minute marks. We scored goals two through Chris Wood and then Sloan Rodriguez and yet again George McDonald. They picked up goals. We conceded too late, but thankfully enough of an advantage to hold on and pick up a 5-3 win. And just noticing we can tie late with this New Zealand team, considering that we are playing with a Gagan press style. And there you can see quite a bit of rotation from that first game that we did play, playing our stronger players against the team that were ranked above us. On the world rankings, the two wins, and it did mean we actually went up the world rankings a little bit to a new high so far in the save, up to 88. That's one better than our previous high. Of 89, so thankfully making our way back up the world rankings now that we are done with OFC World Cup qualifying. Of course, we did pull our ticket to the 2026 World Cup at the end of last week. So it was a good start to things off the back of yesterday's episode. And it did continue once we go over and have a look at what's happened with AFC Auckland off the back of that game against the Western Sydney Wanderers. First up, we took on Sydney United. Did have a bit of a left wing issue going into this game, as you can see, did start my son in Adam Does FM. But we're going to show you the goal because he scored his first A-League goal in this one as we picked up a 3-0 win over the ditch. We were at a 1-0 lead thanks to an early Jordan Courtney Perkins header which made its way into the back of net. And here, Ronald, he floats one far post and does FM, leaps like a salmon and pounces. He puts that one away in the bottom left corner. Off the back of that, Stefan Malk also scored a goal in the first half. And we beat one of the new boys to the A-League this season. 3 0 away from home, but more importantly, does FM actually picked up the assist for that last goal scored by Malk? So he did actually pick up player of the match these days back down the under 19s because our left wing stocks are just a little bit better now. But does FM doing a good job there in his first game for the A League team this season? Of course, last season didn't do too well in that last game of the season against the Melbourne Victory. And off the back of that, we then took on the Perth Glory at Mount Smart Stadium and yet again picked up a fairly comfortable win, 3-1, first half goals here through Teo Atema 
and Renault, he picked up a double. Early in the second half, they got one back through Adesina, which was a little bit of a mess up at the back from us, but thankfully, that was all they did. The only shot on target, and we picked up a 3 1 win. So, of course, that does mean we will stay on top of the A League, seeing as that's where we were come the end of yesterday's episode. Western Sydney, they dropped points a little while ago. They did beat the Wellington Phoenix in what was quite a big game, as those guys at that stage were second and third on the table with the game where they drop points. We go back and have a look. Was against the Red Cliff Waves that same day that we beat Sydney United. So it does mean now we've got a two point gap over them on top of the A League table and already at the halfway point of the season. I dare say a bit of a two horse race like it was between us and the Central Coast Mariners last year because there's 11 points back to Melbourne City already. So you'd like to think we're going to finish one or two in the A-League this season. Hopefully can pull away a bit from the Westerns and the Wanderers. Get through this season nice and quickly. And then get on to our first World Cup with the all Whites. So things going well for us here at AFC Auckland. But while all that's been going on, McCarthy FC have been rising up the table quite a bit. I think when we checked on them at the end of yesterday's episode, they were down somewhere in between 7th and 9th. They've actually risen up above the Wellington Phoenix and Sydney FC, because of their recent form, they've picked up four wins in their last five. One of those was in the Australian Cup, but three in their last four games in the A-League. The only draw did come away against Brisbane City. They've beat the likes of Melbourne City and Sydney FC. So this is certainly a team that we do need to respect in this one, especially as it is away from home. That's the reason I thought this might be a good one to come back for first up in today's episode instead of a Cup game against Sydney Olympic from the second tier and a team we bet quite comfortably a few times in the A-League last season. Going to this first game though of today's episode, we do have a few injury concerns. One of them is to Ronald, albeit he would have been suspended for this game anyway, so that doesn't make too much difference, but no Ronald, hopefully that won't prove too costly. Also missing Gwabin Tormin, so it does mean very, very light on right wing options going to this first game of today's episode. He was coming back from an injury, then for some reason, got played in the under-19s and picked up another one. So he's out for another 5 to 11 days with a twisted ankle. And the other player who is currently out, as per usual, Stefan Negro with a fractured toe out for two to three weeks. So a couple of injury concerns going in to this first game of today's episode. In particular, that right wing is a bit of a concern because of that. Justin Keat, he keeps his spot in the first team off the back of yesterday's episode and actually is going to start this one. The promising player who actually is that attacking playmaker is pretty much bang on with Stefan Malk as a prospect here at AFC Auckland. Certainly someone you might see more of in the next couple of years of this save. But apart from that, we are at full strength in terms of our staying 11 going in to this first game of today's episode. And hopefully we can pick up some points here on the road and stay on top of the league. And here are the team sheets for this first game of today's episode, mainly focusing on McArthur. They are going with a 4-3-3 Clayton Lewis there and a bit more of a forward midfield role in that three. He, of course, is one of our players in the All-Whites. We ran for our team before Keita at right wing with no Ronaldo or Tormine. Also, Basilage on the bench is a younger Basilage, not the goalkeeper we had from the first couple of seasons of this save. He's a newcomer who actually looks a bit better as a striker then does FM, so that's the reason we've been using him as a left wing of my son, and to be fair, he's been doing quite well there, but we'll see how we get on here on the road. Hopefully, can stay on top of the A-League and maybe pick up three points. And the first hollow of this one does come at the 20-minute mark. It is a corner here to McCaffrey FC in the all-white, and Lewis will take that, so he'll be used to that uniform. We're in the all-black, embracing here the New Zealand theme. They knock this one around on the edge of the box, and Rafael Borges Rodriguez will pump that one into the top right corner. I say pump, didn't look like the most powerful shot, but placement-wise, it bit our defence as well as Alex Paulson. And not a good start for us here on the road. We concede from the first highlight that we do see. No one tightly marking near Raphael. He makes the most of that and puts that one away with his left foot. Give the home team a 1-0 lead. And only a few minutes off the back of that opening goal. There's a free kick now to the home team. Hopefully, don't get a chance here to make it 2-0. Hopefully, we can maybe find a way here to strike back. But so far, Clayton Lewis is looking quite dangerous in the few highlights that we have seen. Usually, the backup deep line playmaker in behind Marco Stamanek for the national team. But he's on the ball here. Tries to do his man there and actually takes on a shot. Thankfully, a bit of a low percentage chance that one. It goes wide, but early stages on the back foot. And 1-0 behind. 
And that was it for the first half, just those two highlights in favour of McCaffrey FC. And unfortunately, we conceded off the first of those through Raphael, and we are 1-0 down here at halftime. And based on stats, can't argue with that too much, really for the first time this season on the back foot, both in terms of highlights that we have seen as well. As these stats need to give the boys a bit of a rev up here at halftime, we'll take off Courtney Perkins on a yellow card for Adam Mitchell. Also, unfortunately, Justin Keat not doing too well. The reason we called up Basilage is because our only other right-wing option in the squad at the moment is Ben Wayne, so he can go and play right-wing in the second half. If you're wondering, we have Matt Wilson, who made a few appearances last season, is he broke his leg, so don't expect to see too much of him this year, but not a good first half. We'll give the boys a rev up and hopefully turn around this 1-0 deficit. And it's taken 20 minutes, but we eventually get the first highlight of the second half yet. Again, though, a corner to McCaffrey FC. Clayton Lewis this time can't quite pick out a teammate, but they do keep the ball here in German. Will take on a shot, but thankfully that goes well over the bar. And we are still only 1-0 behind. And right off the back of that, there is a throw in our favour. Was just going to look there and see if we needed to take someone off. We'll try and ignore there that message about that was Victor Ross. I clicked the wrong button. And I think I might have missed something there. A tag along Ben Wayne from Clayton Lewis. And it's a straight red card. Apologies about the misclick there. But off the back of that, there's definitely a chance for us now to try and take this game to McCaffrey. FC. we're going to make a sub, Taylor Tamer going fairly. Nathan Palmer can come on for him. Also, we'll chuck our wing backs on attack and just see if that might help us against 10 men. But a big chance for us now to turn this one around. Also, go wider and attack. Hopefully, we can now grab something from this game. 1-0 down, but against 10 men. And just about to make our way into the last 15 minutes of this game, and I think it's now time for our last two substitutions. We'll take off Kuenadze going fairly, and also just coming back from an injury, so was recommended for 75 minutes. The Hotman de Villiers can come on for him. And also Caputo going fairly will bring on Stefan Malk. Hopefully he can do something similar to what he did late on against the Wanderers in yesterday's episode. But unfortunately, we're still 1-0 down, and it might now be time for us to go more attacking with 10 minutes left. Indeed, we'll do that also. Go a bit higher tempo and see if that will help us out. Also distribute to our fullbacks. But we are still 1-0 behind late. And we're getting really deep into this game now. And we are still 1-0 behind despite the fact we're against 10 men. So because of that, going to really try and push the tempo late in this one. Go full high also. We did before put Nathan Palmer onto support instead of defend as that defensive midfielder. And right off the back of that, there is a highlight in our favour, a corner. We can't connect with anyone, but thankfully, staying back there was Nathan Palmer to tidy things up. He'll pick out Elliot there, right back, loose touch. Holman does win that one back for McCarthy, but thankfully, Elliot retrieves it well. And now we find Debungo on that left-hand side. Fizzes that one into the mixer, looking for Chris Wood. But thankfully, it's been touched by Aspropotamus. I think was the name there. It was an absolute mouthful of greatness. But we do grab an equaliser, albeit an own goal. But thankfully, we'll get at least something out of this game. Hopefully, we might find a way to grab a double in injury time against the 10 men here. Hopefully, they might tire late. But that is a late goal, which we thankfully get because the beefier stats-wise, we've been awful so far in this game. The beefier shots on target ratio to overall shots, actually a bit better than usual for us here at AFC Auckland, but apparently all those shots were garbage, and we do pick up a one-all draw, it's a very scratchy one, probably one of our worst performances so far of this season, but thankfully we get something out of that game, probably thanks to that red card to Clayton Lewis off the back of setting up that first goal earlier in the first half through Rafael Borgos Rodriguez, but thankfully that late own goal off the back of that ball fizzed into the mixer by Ivan de Bungo does mean that we do pick up a point here on the road, we'll just go forward and see if we can figure out what that does to the table, as that will depend on what is happening with the Western Sydney Wanderers. They haven't played yet, so at the moment, we have three points secure to be fair based on goal differential. We'll stay top of the league, but a chance for them now to catch us up. We'll come back shortly and take on the Melbourne victory off the back of a League Cup game. And we are back about to take on the Melbourne victory in our second game of today's episode. Gone for a couple of weeks off the back of that first game now, just past Christmas on the 27th of December. Thankfully, still two points clear on the A-League because the Perth Glory, they held the Western Sydney Wanderers to a nil or draw. So thankfully that result at MacArthur, not too bad. And still nine points back to Melbourne City. They are now the team in third. Interesting results on that match day too, especially up top. Sydney United with a 6-3 win 
over the Phoenix. George McDonald still doing well, but that's a bit of a rough result. The Phoenix now starting to drop down the ladder, maybe. They're going to reverse what they've done the first couple of seasons of the save. But that does mean we're still top of the table, hopefully. Can keep our two-point gap over the Wanderers when we do take on the Melbourne victory in the second game of today's episode. They're currently in fifth, starting to make their way back up the table a little bit after they were seventh at the end of yesterday's episode. But before we look at them going into that second game today, we will have a look at what's happened in the League Cup. We were scheduled to play just one game in this competition before this victory won. Actually, ended up being two that's why there was such a big gap in between that Campbelltown City game and that victory one first up to pick up a 4-2 win, as you would expect, especially at Mount Smart. Goals to Stefan Malk and Justin Kidd in the first half, cancelled out by one to Alex Mullen, which did make it 2-1 at half time. Same amount of goals in the second half, an own goal through Saba and one to De Hotman de Villiers with how we picked up our four. We gave away a late penalty, which Gonzalez did put away but go through fairly comfortably with a 4-2 win. And as you might have seen, that did actually set up quite an interesting tie as we took on Melbourne City over at Amy Park in the third round of the League Cup. Also worth mentioning that Campbelltown City game, the first game we've ever won in that competition, and we backed it up with a 3-0 win over City at Amy Park. Put out a full-strength team for this game, seeing as we had such a big gap up until this Melbourne victory run, and thankfully it did pay off early header from Victor Ross and then two goals late as we were trying to time waste through Chris Wood and to Hotman de Villiers did mean we picked up a 3-0 win. As you can see, that was a pretty comprehensive performance and it's not like Melbourne City put out a weak team either. So that was a good win going through to the quarterfinals of the League Cup. So might be in with a chance here of potentially picking up four trophies this season at AFC Auckland next up in that competition off the deck of this Melbourne victory game. We take on Adelaide City. It is away from home, but you'd like to think with those guys being in the second division, albeit currently a team well and truly in the hunt to come up to the A-League. The Newcastle Jets already guaranteed to do so. They are tearing up that second division, already coming up to the A-League for next season. But it should be a team that we can beat, hopefully can put out some rotation players off the back of this one coming up where we do take on the Melbourne victory. But that's who we're playing in the second game of today's episode, albeit a couple of issues we are going to deal with. First up, Max Caputo. He's away on the under-23 Asian Cup with Australia. We'll be interested to see if he gets in the picture for the Socceroos team at the moment on under-23 duty. And based on his age, that might be an issue for the next little while. So he's away for around about a month. But that tournament does mean that Justin Keat is still in the first team. But these days is a backup central attacking midfielder in behind Stefan Malk, as I've mentioned a few times. Not too much of a drop-off in between him and Stefan Malk. And also, Sebastian Pascali picked up a yellow card. And that went over Melbourne City, so he is suspended for this next game. Simple switch there as Nick Baker steps in in that deep-line playmaker role. But we're about to take on the Melbourne victory. You also have someone away on under-23 duty at the Asian Cup with Australia. Earlier this season, we took these guys in on our first game in the A-League. Very, very interesting game. Went 2-0 down, turned it around late with two late goals this time. We're at Mount Smart, hopefully can pick up a good result. Also these days, they are managed by a new gym manager. That's because Graham Arnold, he went back to being the Australian manager after resigning for some reasons. That was a very interesting reign there by Graham Arnold going to the victory and then going back to the Socceroos where he was previously, but hopefully can get some revenge on these guys for earlier in the season, albeit recent form of theirs. Is pretty decent, just the loss to the Western United, and they got thumped in that game, which is a bit surprising. Western United, they are down just outside of a relegation playoff position, but hopefully we can pick up three points here and stay on top of the A-League at Mount Smart and get a bit of revenge on the victory. And here are the team sheets for the second game of today's episode. So obviously Stefan Malk is in that cam roll with no Caputo. Also Ronaldo's back as well as Tormin as our right wing options. And as well as that, we've got Baker in the DLP role with that suspension. To Piscali there at the Melbourne victory, they are going with a 4-3-3. Still got the likes of Daniel Lazani. It's a pretty strong victory team, but hopefully we can pick up some points here at home and stay on top of the table. And just shot the 15 minute mark, we get the first highlight of this game. It is a goal kick here to the Melbourne victory in the white pinky uniform. We are in the all black things. I didn't want a bit of a clash there with the blue hoops. It might have been a slight clash, not too much. But we'll play in the black thing as that's a bit easier 
to distinguish between, but at the moment the victory here are uh, keeping the ball quite nicely from this first time. Like Jake Brimley briefly on the ball, he's pretty much scored in every game we've played against the victory so far in this save. Hopefully we can keep him quiet. That's a good start there from Callum Elliott to win the ball off a victory player, albeit Ronald there loses out. But now Stefan Mount gets in behind off a poor back pass, tight angle, unfortunately takes on the shot instead of trying to square that. Or I think that would have been Chris Wood. The shot goes wide, still nil all, but good early pressure here on the victory. And we'll get a chance again here from a goal kick. Yet again, Izzo plays that one out to Broxham. And now it's Jiria on the ball. Brimmer, poor pass there, Kivinadze. He can find Stefan Mount, Chris Wood in behind. Puts it away, I think it was offside, but no VAR check, so he must have been on, and we make the most of a Jake Brimmer mistake that's quite nice off the back of the way he's done against us so far in the save, and Chris Wood is back in the goals and makes it 1-0 nice and early here at Mount Smart. In fact, he's well onside there, sits on the shoulder of Jerry, I think that is, and he puts that one away, bottom left corner, and gives us a 1-0 lead. And 10 minutes off the back of that opening goal, we are now down the other end here for a throw into the victory. They try and put that one into the mixer. Cullen Elliott will hit that one away. He's on a yellow card, so a few iffy moments there, just making sure, hopefully, that he doesn't pick up a second yellow. And now it's Baker there, who was on the ball, plays that back to Courtney Perkins, back on the ball, but thankfully smart option there, and picks out Victor Ross as we do look to build from the back. But good start here at Mount Smart as we take a 1-0 lead off the back with a mess up at the back there from Jake Brimmer, now Kvernadze, as we start to make our way into the opposition half. Now Chris Wood will find Callan Elliott in some space, he loves it, and it's been really good for us so far in this save, just on the edge of the box, and inside the byline, plays that back to Pateo Atema, Ronald on the ball, back to goal, tackled, forced to Stefan Malkin, this time hits the target from a tight angle, Izzo there gets beaten when he probably shouldn't do, and that makes it 2-0 at the half hour mark, and a really good start for us here against the Melbourne victory, and hopefully now a chance for us to pick up all three points, but the victory at the moment just looking a bit sloppy at the back. Thankfully, we're making the most of it, and Stefan Malk makes it 2-0. And it looks like that will do it for the first half. Really good first half from us there. So far, the Melbourne victory yet to get a single shot off in this game. To be fair, we've not been too threatening, but just making the most there of some Melbourne victory mistakes, and goals to Chris Wood and Stefan Malk, who got the assist. For that first one, do mean we're going to half time with a 2 0 lead. I think we'll try and play things safe here. Take off Cullen Elliott on the yellow card for Stefan Negro coming back from injury. A little bit of a concern. Of course, he is a very injury prone player, but hopefully can do well against the club that we did buy him from going into the first season of this save. And hopefully we can hold on and pick up three points here with this 2 0 lead. And in fact, a very early highlight here in the second half. Those subs still coming up on the screen. And we do turn the ball over here and might get a chance. Ronald, he is on the attack and his pace here on these victory defenders. Looked like he was trying to get there to the byline to square that, but gets brought down by Broxham. And that looks like a pretty clear-cut penalty. I'm pretty sure these days Chris Wood is on these for us, especially now that Gwavine Tormine no longer a starter. And especially off the back of some recent injuries. Does look like number 99, Chris Wood here with a chance to pick up a double in your bank, put this game to bed, but Izzo comes up with a really good save, Melbourne victory there it says, going to a 5-1, 2-2, going quite defensive, double bad news there too, Western Sydney now 1-0 up over Sydney Olympic, we'll try and pick out Chris Wood from a cross, but unfortunately can't do it, we miss a penalty, hopefully that won't prove too costly, and give the victory a chance to get back in this game, as it's still 2-0. And just making our way into the last 20 minutes of this game, nothing's happened off the back of that penalty miss, which is quite nice. The victory eventually do get off a shot, but thankfully not on target. Probably now time for us to start making some substitutions, albeit the way it's going. Actually quite happy with this, and of course, a bit of quite a big gap before this game of around about 10 days. But I think we'll take off both our wingers coming back from some recent injuries. So Tormine at right wing and De Hotman de Villiers out on the left wing. I think that will do for now as we look to hold on to this 2-0 lead. And now about to make our way into the last 10 minutes of this game. We've still got a couple of stoppages saved up. So we'll take off Tawa Tamar on a red heart for Nathan Palmer. He'll come on in that DM role. Still tune up as we make our way into the late stages of this game. And in fact, right off the back of that, now Stefan Melk drops down to a red heart. So with our last substitution quite late on, we'll bring on Justin Keat in that central attacking midfield role. To be fair, probably should have done those subs when we did the others of those wingers, and they could have picked up a rating, but just felt like we were playing quite well, didn't want to change too much, 
Now, a late free kick here to the Melbourne victory. Thankfully, Courtney Perkins heads that one away, and Tormine now with a chance to get us on the counter-attack. Let's see how he's looking off the back of a couple of injuries in a row. Picks out Palmer, takes on a shot, comes off the post, it falls to Negro, who will score his first goal of the season against his former club, and that will wrap this up at 3-0, and that's a nice three points for us here against the team who did hold us to a two-all draw on the opening day of the season, and even then, we were quite fortunate to get something out of that game, but thankfully Negro just puts that one past Izzo off the back of that initial shot, which came off the post from Palmer. Off the back of that, there is a highlight here to the victory as they try now and grab a consolation goal. Excuse me while I put my glasses up because it's a bit sweaty here. They're falling down my nose, so we'll just sort that out. And it is the victory here who get on the attack through Falami, but at this point, it's pretty much game over. They float that far post. For Ryan Teague, it comes off the post, did beat Alex Paulson, but thankfully doesn't make its way over the line. We clear it and Paulson can claim the ball as it went back into the mixer, and that will do it. A couple of late highlights. We grab a goal through Stefan Negro to put the cherry on top. Thankfully, that penalty miss early in the second half from Chris Wood doesn't prove too costly. First half goal to him, as well as one to Stefan Malk, as well as that late one to Negro does mean we pick up a comfortable 3 0 win that will see us stay on top of the A League. So, a good one for us there, second up in today's episode, picking up some good form off the back of that draw first up against McCarthy FC. Thankfully, also Western Sydney Wanderers, they drop points on that match day. Unfortunately, they also win on that day that we beat Melbourne Victory. That goal to Badalato at the 63 minute mark does mean. They pick up a 1-0 win. It still looks like a two-horse race here just past the halfway point of the season because if we go for one day, the Wellington Phoenix are back on track. George McDonald picks up a hat-trick as they thump Melbourne City 5-1 at Sky Stadium. So it does mean 12 points clear now of Melbourne City. Definitely looking like a two-horse race. Can't imagine we'll drop that many points in the run home. So you'd like to thank us in Western Sydney Wanderers we will fight out the A-League title this season. Hopefully, we can make it back-to-back -back titles, especially because, of course, they are managed by Marco the Snake Rudan and also have our old players on their team in Nick Sullivan and Louis Toomey. But I think that will do it for today's episode. Some decent results there, especially late on with those 3-0 wins over both the Melbourne teams off the back of that earlier draw at McCarthy FC. If you enjoyed today's episode, then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up, on the video, and if you haven't done so or really and are enjoying the series here on the channel, also consider hitting that subscribe button and turning that notification bell on as well. We'll probably come back in the not too distant future, just because the youth intakes in the save, they of course do happen in January. So we'll see if we get any decent prospects through our one this year to be fair based on the preview. Don't think it's too likely, only expecting a good intake, and the highest rate of position is wingers with a rating of C, so don't expect too much, but still, we'll have a look at our youth intake, and also maybe have a peek and see if some good players do come for at the Wellington Phoenix, like has been the case the last couple of years, with the likes of George McDonald, and with Adam White, so we'll come back around our youth intake, which I think is mid-January, and in and around that, we'll play some games, just seeing who we could take on, who are high up on the A-League table, Melbourne City, a one team that's a bit late on, in January, and off the back of that, we could take on a Brisbane City, one of the new teams to the A-League, albeit that is at home, so can't do a bus trip for that one, but maybe we'll do those two games late on in January, and also, that will allow us the chance to update you guys on any transfer window business, if we do any, before we do get stuck in to deadline day, so I think we'll come back tomorrow, youth intake, Melbourne City, and Brisbane City, so until then, thank you very much for watching, keep on keeping on, and I'll see you then, cheers.